The last section we're going to deal with in this video is the linear equations using and transposing formula. Oh, formulae, very nice. Loving the, uh, the spelling. Um, so using and transposing formulae. Uh, okay, sounds good. What exactly does that mean? Uh, or as I'm wanted to say now, what does that have to do with the price of fish? Well, I suppose initially, let's look at something with regards to important uh, language that's used. Um, make the subject of, evaluate, transpose. These are all terms used in mathematics that, that pretty much give you the roadmap to how to solve the question. Um, and it's there, I suppose, ultimately to try and trick. Um, those students who I have at this moment in time will, will remember me talking about Barry, and uh, maybe we'll come back to Barry at some other point in a, in a different video. But um, it does surprise me that there's a lot of things used in mathematics that I think are there specifically to try and trick people, or as uh, we like to put it in education, test your understanding. So we'll come back to make the subject of and evaluate and transpose in a moment. Um, but I suppose uh, it sort of makes sense to just kick into the first question here. Oop! Once again, forgot to turn on my whiteboard. Oh, sexy. Um, ooh, first question, a lot of letters in there. Um, evaluate. Uh, 2 open bracket P plus Q close bracket minus R equals Z. If Q equals 2, R equals minus 3, and Z equals 11. And I suppose, again, with maths, the thing that uh, tends to trick us up at any point here is, is what the language is. So we'll ignore evaluate in a moment. Here is obviously an equation. And just to let you know, Q equals 2, R equals minus 3, and Z equals 11. That's just a way of telling you to later on to substitute. And uh, without going into too many more football analogies or soccer analogies, um, on with the question. So the first thing I'm going to do is write out the equation. I've got two open brackets, P plus Q minus R equals Z. Um, evaluate, in this instance, just means substitute the numbers and see what happens. All right. So we've got two open brackets, P plus Q. Well, two is fine. What is P? Well, we don't know what P is. So I'm just going to write the P, but it does tell me that Q is 2. So I'm going to substitute the Q and minus R. Now, when I'm minusing R, we need to be very careful because R is minus 3. So we are minus, minus 3. And the fact I've gone minus, minus means that uh, we're trying to trick people. So just for completeness and not to rush things because at the end of the day, it's not a race. Minus, minus becomes plus equals 11. Now, let's go back to my nice analogy here. We've got the prison guard. We have the prison with our prisoners inside, and we have the creepy old lady who's watching the prisoners guard the prison guards, people, people. Mm. Anyway, so, well, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to get rid of this creepy old lady because the prisoners can't escape by kissing the prison guard if she's watching because they'll mm, get back into prison. So the plus three moves to the other side and hopefully becomes a minus three. So that leaves the 2. P plus 2 is equal to 11 minus 3. Yep, that definitely looks like minus 3, doesn't it? Nope. So let's just try that one again. And we'll put minus 3. So we've got 2 open brackets. P plus 2 is equal to ooh, 8. Yay! Now again, we could multiply out the brackets and we could then do our algebra. But let's try and be cleverer. I've got nothing now hindering the fact that that is a kissy-kissy between the two and the bracket. So rather than kiss the prison guards, let's just move the times by two to the other side and make it a divide by two. Hence, leaving the P and the two completely free. So in my previous analogy, the prison guards run away to the foreign legion. So there's the eight, and the times by two becomes a divide by two. And so we have P plus two is equal to 4. Well, there's no kissing going on, so the plus 2, I'm afraid, is just going to do what it needs to do, and it's going to disappear over to the other side. And we're going to get P is equal to 4 minus 2, or P is equal to 2. So I suppose we've now evaluated, or we found the value of P. So substituting, nice and easy, if they give you values, Put it into the equation and just solve. Find what it is you're actually trying to find. In this case, we were trying to find the value of P. It was equal to 2. North, 
and easy climb your kangaroo down oh here we go now this is some of that wording that we need to have uh, right at the beginning transpose v equals u plus at to make a the subject now i know as um you know subject of her majesty um we're gonna get into that conversation um, i'll get flamed but the idea is that what it's effectively saying is look here is an equation at the moment v is the subject it just means that v is first v is on its own it's the lunar um all it wants to do is effectively move things around so that a is on its own now if this was filled with numbers we probably would be quite happy to do that the fact it's got letters is no different whatsoever so i have v equals u plus a t well i want to get the a on its own which means that actually because it's kissing the t i've got to move this u notice i didn't circle that plus remember who that plus is belonging to it belongs to the at so the v moves to the other side and well because we don't like q jumpers the v stays at the front the plus u becomes a minus u equals a t well what's between the a and the t yep it's a kissy kissy so a multiplied by t we want the a on its own so it's part of a breakup the times by t moves to the other side and becomes a divide by t now i'm just going to change colors because again v minus u divided by t equals a looks confusing it's open to problems this was already here if we want to say it was already here and leave it in this form then you should put those in brackets that isn't too bad a form but actually in many cases if you're going to divide by t the v minus the v minus u was already there so we're going to do a divide sign and the t is equal to a if I write it around so that a is equal to v minus u over t, and there's nothing to say that you need to do that, it's just my convention, what I've been doing for years, now means that I have a as my subject. Yep, a is on my own, and transpose, I suppose, just means, transpose, I suppose? Transpose just means move things around. Get it on its own, you know, do the change the side, change the sign, and the kissy kissy, and the bunk beds, and the prison guards, and the creepy old woman do that with letters rather than just numbers we've got an idea now with how to talk about letters and numbers and, and what have you and let's make the example a bit more complicated so uh, a path of x meters width surrounds a rectangular lawn oh joy here we go another rectangle the lawn is l meters long and b meters wide the total area of the path is a square meters. Whoa, there's a lot of letters in here. Find a in terms of L, B, and X. In terms of. Right, what does that mean? Uh, I haven't written anything on there in terms of. So, uh, well, okay, we'll come back to that one in a second. Now, one of the other things I've been taught and sort of go on and on and on about is that in life, a diagram saves a thousand words. If we're talking about a rectangular lawn and we have a path, Let's have a rectangular lawn and let's have a path. So first things first, there is my rectangular lawn and there is my path. So the path is now coated or colored in blue. So we have our lawn, which is around the edge of my rectangular garden. And we know that the difference between here and here is X. And that's actually true for the whole diagram. So all the way around, the distance is going to be X. Now I've written those on because actually it tends to come in useful. So what else does it tell me? It tells me the lawn is L meters long. L meters long. So as far as I'm concerned, that distance there between here and here is going to be L. Right? Not the whole garden. The whole garden is the outside. That's the lawn. This is the lawn here. And it's B meters wide. So I know that that bit there between there and there is B meters wide. We know now that the total area of the path, that's this whole thing here, is A. So we've got the total area is A. Uh, right, well how do we find just the area of the path? Or how do we find a formula for just the area of the path? Well, hopefully it's going to be the area of the big bit, you know, the outside of the path, minus the area of the inside part of the path. Uh, right, well, what's the area of the outside? Well, I suppose what we need to firstly know is what's the area of 
this line here. What's the area of the outside box? Well, to do that, we need to know the dimensions of the box. And as it turns out, we know the dimensions of the box must be B, which is this white bit inside, plus an X, plus an X. So that becomes B plus 2X wide. Okay, same idea. What's my length between here and here, this big outside enclosing box? Well, I suppose it's L plus X plus X, which is L plus 2X. So I now know the area of the whole lawn is equal to, um, uh, or rather the area, yeah, the area of this whole air uh, garden is equal to, um, let's just put an AG here to stand for garden, is equal to L plus 2X multiplied by B plus 2X. Now, one of the problems here that we tend to face is that using the letter L, you have to be very, very careful because that could look like a 1. And in the, you know, the heat of an example with regards to doing a, an exam, if you mistake an L for a 1, or in fact the examiner who's marking it mistakes it, you could lose valuable marks. So be very, very careful. And maybe later on I won't use examples that have L in it. It's very difficult when you start talking about length, though. So that's the area of the whole part. What's the area of the inside part? Well, the area of the inside part, which is, I suppose, the lawn area, is just BL, right? It's this BL. So we now know that the area of the path, which is they've called A, is equal to the area of the whole garden minus the area of the lawn. And so if we write that in terms of algebra, we have L plus 2X multiplied by B plus 2X minus B multiplied by L. Yee. There you go. There is my A in terms of all sorts of different letters, right? So is that in terms of L, B and X? Well, firstly, let's actually multiply this out. All right, so we're going to use FOIL. For those of you who understand FOIL, I didn't. I did first, 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 second, second, first, second, second. Totally different video. Watch that. So I've got L multiplied by B is LB. I've got L multiplied by plus 2X, which is 2XL. I have plus 2X times B, which is plus 2XB. And I've got plus 2X times plus 2X, which is positive 4X squared. And we've got a minus that BL. Well, again, we now know that LB and BL are the same thing, so they actually now cancel each other out. And so what do I have left? I have A is equal to 4X squared plus 2, I'm going to write LX because again we put these in order, plus 2BX. So that seems to be an answer, but let's just check this in terms of business. I mean, what did it actually mean by the term, the expression in terms of? Well, easily or nice and easy, that just means let A be up. So there's another way of saying let A be the subject of the formula. But the only thing we're allowed in our equation, when it has the words in terms of, the only thing we're allowed in our equation are the letters L, B, and X. So let's just check. We've got L, B, X, X, all of those letters are allowed. I am happy. There is my answer. I can now move on. Now, obviously, there's a lot more we could do. We could give the value of X. We could give the value of L. We could give the value of B. And we could now find out the area. But that's beyond the scope of this question. One more question, I think, before we conclude. Um, <laughs> let's look at this formula. This is actually a kinematics formula or a mechanics in the United Kingdom whereby it's given that the distance of a projectile is given by the initial speed times time plus half times the acceleration times the time squared. Confused? Yep, I thought you would be but actually in many cases that's not important to us at this moment in time. It's just a, a formula. It's an equation. It's, it's something that we can use to move letters around. So we could end up with a nice simple question by saying, well, let U be the subject, right? Let U be the subject. Uh, well, if we're now making U the subject, that just means things we move things around. So we've got S equals UT plus a half AT squared. 
Right, well, the U and the T are kissing, so they're quite happy. And we've now got a pretty major gooseberry to uh, go back to a previous video. Because the half and the A and the T squared are, are all kissing, and that's a little bit confusing, a little bit concerning, actually. So we'll uh, just um, turn a blind eye, but they are obviously all watching. And while they're all uh, watching, we don't particularly want that, because we want the U on its own. So I'm afraid that all moves. Now, it moves all together. All right, that plus is important, so it becomes S minus a half a t squared is equal to u t. Uh, fractions. We not like fractions. We could finish this off quite naturally by now saying, well, okay, I can split up my u and t because I can do s minus a half a t squared is equal to u kissy kissy t and we don't want the t on its on there so that now is part of a breakup and from a previous video we now know that we can move that under here because it's a half s a minus t squared all over t is equal to u and i suppose in a roundabout yuck way you could argue that that is the right value <clears throat> uh not really because we can't have fractions within fractions. So let's go back to that stage and start again. Let's get rid of our fraction first. So I have a half a t squared equals ut. We want to get rid of that half, which is this divide by 2 here. And how do we get rid of the divide by 2? Yep, we multiply absolutely everything by 2. So we get 2s. That disappears minus a t squared and we remember we multiply everything by 2 which becomes 2ut. Ooh, So we've got a 2 and a u and a t all kissing but there's going to be some sort of strange breakup because we want the u on its own so what does that actually give us? Well 2s minus a t squared is equal to 2t. They're staying together but unfortunately the u is the one who's going to be moved or left and so the times by 2t moves to the other side and like we've shown over here we can now write that as 2s uh, or rather ss no way I don't think so we'll try that one again we'll have 2s minus a t squared all over 2t equals u and for completeness u then becomes equals to 2s minus a t squared all over 2t Yay! Now, I suppose it looks ugly when you see it all in the context of one whole sheet, but remember, we didn't like this. This was not a good answer, so, you know, we're just using the ideas of algebra that we've had before. Well, that was one example. That was making you the subject, but what if they wanted A to be the subject? Or A. All right, we already did U. That seemed relatively simple. Um, well, not so simple. Um, so let's have a look at trying to make A the subject. Same thing, I'm going to write out the equation again. S equals ut plus a half a t squared. Maybe this time we'll learn our lesson with regard to the half because we don't really want it there. And so what are we going to do? Yep, I need to multiply everything by 2. We'll do that first, get rid of that fraction. We don't, really don't like it. So 2s is equal to 2ut plus a t squared. Well, the 2, the u, and the t are being the gooseberry. They're watching the a and the t squared kissing. So I suppose it's the 2ut that moves to move. And remember, that plus belongs to those. So that moves over. And so we have 2s minus 2ut is equal to a t squared. And nice and simply, a times t squared is equal to 2s minus 2ut. And as we want the a on its own, it goes through that breakup. So the times by t squared moves over, and it becomes a divide. So 2s minus 2ut, all divided by t squared, is equal to a, or I suppose for completeness, 2s minus 2ut over t squared is my answer. Now, I could do thousands of examples, but this is just a flavor of what it is you need to do. Transposing, making the subject in terms of, hopefully they've all been covered in this video. One of the most uh, asked questions when I do this particular question is, well, why can't I actually transpose or uh, make T the subject of the formula? 
it actually unfortunately it has to do with this t squared and the t value and is beyond the scope at this moment in time so uh, let's just say that at uh, this moment in time it's not possible and so here concludes the video on using and transposing formula